Okay, thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stephen Bishop, and during the pilot phase, I managed the coordination of the Future ICT project. Dirk Helbing behind me um, provides the scientific leadership, and Paul Lukovic here on the right um, drives the ICT components. Now, I've asked Dirk and Paul to help me try and explain the motivation and the vision for this truly European initiative. So we are living in an information age, but what does it really mean? It means that we have connected our world, we have made connections of billions of components, and that has created a hyper-connected system. At the same time, we are running into an age of exascale computing and into an age of big data. So within just a few years, we'll gener generate more information than in the whole history of humanity. What are the opportunities of this? What are the risks? What are the implications for society, for our economy? What are the ethical implications also for privacy? And what are the implications for technology? In fact, information communication technologies of the future will become more and more artificial social systems. They'll create a picture of the environment, will make predictions of the future, will take autonomous decisions and communicate with each other. That means if you want to design those systems right, we need to understand what makes socially interactive systems work well and what makes them fail. All this is a manifestation of a profound change in the relationship between society and ICT system. As Professor Profumo said, we are in the verge of the boundaries between the real and the digital becoming blurred. Just imagine a single photo that you post to Flickr can trigger revolutions. This is something that is for the good and for the bad. Both the riots in London and the Arab Revolution have been attributed to the effects of technology. This means that today, you cannot view society and ICT as systems that interact, but are essentially separate, independent. Instead, you have to model and understand them in a single, tightly interweaved system. A system that involves billions of complex interacting entities, some of them machines, some humans. In fact, this is probably the most complex artifact that our human, human society has ever seen. An artifact that, in its complexity, competes with anything you can see in nature and in society. And as a project driven by fundamental science, we want to develop methods for understanding of this new type of artifact, which today we do not understand. And as a project that is driven by a desire for social impact, we want to develop methods for managing the system, for designing better, most socially good ICT, and for managing our society in a more efficient way. The flash crash of May 6, 2010 actually shows what can happen if we don't understand the interaction of system components. Now, financial trading is done by supercomputers these days. More than 50% of transactions are done by them. That flash crash actually evaporated $600 billion in just 20 minutes. It turned out that this was not a criminal act. It was not the result of a mistake or an error. <clears throat> it was an interaction effect. Certainly, networking is good. We have created a globalized world. We have a global exchange of people, money, goods, and ideas. And that has created so many new opportunities and services and functions. But on the other hand, we have created strongly connected systems. And it turns out that these also create an infrastructure for the quick spreading of disaster. Thank you very much. So our vision actually is to bring three areas together, the areas of ICT, social science, and complexity science. So we're trying to bring these three elements together. This will create new knowledge. It will also create new ICT. But also importantly, we'll leverage all this information to address the 21st challenges that we're currently faced with. We have globalized our world, we have pushed for many technological revolutions, but we don't have so far the global system science to understand the techno-socioeconomic systems that we have created. In order to fill the knowledge gaps, we need to create a science of systemic risks, a theory of complex systems with real-world impact.
and that requires a new data science, huge amounts of data really to make sense of what is going on there. We also need to learn how to do integrated systems design in a way that makes sure that not only the components work well, but also the interaction of components has favorable results. And most of all, we need to understand the co-evolution of ICT with society. So this is an the general principle behind what you have seen is that of going from the shadow, the imprint that the real world leaves in the digital way through sensors, Twitter, blogs, search queries, to complex statements, predictions, and forecasts about social phenomena, things that are relevant to our society. And it, with any scientific endeavor that goes in two, two steps, the first step is, me is measurement. Finally, with the system that we are proposing, we will have the, a, a means to measure the global state of our society using computer science methods to evaluate the global big data deluge. Then, we would feed the results of that analysis into models. Finally, driving complex social models with data from real-world phenomena. Today, there are quite a few projects looking at this type of analysis. However, what they all have in common is that if you have a certain question that you would like to investigate, something like, say, disease spread, you need to invent many, many months, possibly many years, to design a special purpose system to actually do that. The ambition of futurists is to create a search engine-like general purpose system where complex queries from different areas can be posed by non-experts. The system then would take the queries, configure in a privacy-respecting, legal constraints-respecting way the different information source sources, configure the models, run the system, and allow people to explore the answers. And exploring those answers with different methods is an extremely interesting point because there are no simple answers to difficult questions. You have to allow people to explore and to understand. And because there are no simple answers to complex questions, the project is more than just piping, feeding results of computer science analysis into social models. We want to design a new methodology that fuses methods from computer science with complexity science models, with social science models, to develop new ways of understanding our society, understanding our socioeconomic systems through big data, through electronic shadows. And you see here the three main components of the project that will be described later, that will actually be implemented, which is the planetary nervous system for measurement, the living earth simulator for simulations and data exploration, and a global participatory platform to enable people to actually leverage this in a variety of applications. So the immediate impact of what we are trying to do will be to leverage big data, the big data that today we do not want how to use, for methods to explore and to better manage our society. At the same time, you're going to create innovation. So what you see is a cover of a German magazine, The Spiegel, which a couple of years ago said, the fight for the web, with the conclusion that the fight for the web 1.0 and 2.0 was won by American companies. We want to create a new wave of ICT technology that will be European and will create jobs in Europe. And that new wave is based on three pillars. Professor Orwoska said something about awareness. So we want to make the global ICT system aware of what is happening to society. We want to make it able to react, adapt and interact with society as a whole in a way that is accessible and good for humans. And we want to make it by r more robust by actually adapting and being organized as society itself. That means that we will have a new wave of information society where values, privacy, social benefits are built in by design into the technology. And we want to build technology that leverages the social in interaction to be more robust and solve the problems that today we have with critical systems not being properly under our control. So how will it work? will bring, first of all, data, models, and people together. And the system has three main components, the planetary nervous system, the living earth simulator, and the global participatory platform. The planetary nervous system will address what is question, what is the state of the world. It will turn data into information. And then the Living Earth Simulator will use this data and address what-if scenarios, will turn information into knowledge. And all of this will be made available for policymakers, for business leaders, and for civilians, for everybody. 
So it will be good for everybody and let us go into the planetary nervous system a little bit more. So you can imagine it as uh, collecting data from all over the world. People could, for example, donate pictures and that would allow us to reconstruct the 3D physical world. But this is not for enough for us. We really want to understand the social implications and economic and technological implications of human decisions and actions. We want to be able to quantify the social footprint and social capital such as trust because this is the basis for human well-being but also for economic value generation. We know that the financial crisis is basically a crisis of trust. It has really destroyed tens of thousands of billion dollars and so we need to understand what constitutes social capital. And that whole planetary nervous system establishes a CERN-like vision. We want to create a measurement instrument for techno socio economic environmental systems. Then the living Earth simulator is going to use these data to model and simulate and make short-term probabilistic predictions. The challenge here is to integrate existing models of human decision-making, of cooperation, of conflict, um, of traffic, production, and the economy, and many other systems. These component models are partly available and now have to be integrated. We need to scale them up to global scale and then eventually increase the detail of description as we did it actually for weather forecasts, taking however also into account the response of people to information. And Future ICT is also going to create new interactive gaming platforms as experimental platforms. And that will basically allow us to create rapid results about human activity and human behavior. So somehow that will accelerate progress in science as the Human Genome Project did. Now, the global participatory platform will make all of this available for everybody. So this will be a platform for exploration and interaction. We want to create actually a new data and model commons, a platform for everybody. And that is, uh, that has of course a lot of potential to create new services and jobs and to reduce the barriers to social, economic and political participation. However, there is a problem. For all public goods, uh, there is a danger that they would be misused or exploited. So in this case, there could be data pollution, there could be manipulation, misuse of data, privacy intrusion, or cybercrime. So how do we create these systems in a way that promote responsible use? And the idea is to come up with a trustable self-regulated information ecosystem. Besides, there will be an innovation accelerator, a platform for efficient large-scale cooperation, innovation and education that will shorten the time span between inventions and the market. There will be, as deliverables of our project, exploratories for the economy, for society, technology and the environment, and these will address in particular financial systems, health issues, uh, crime and conflict, but also smart energy systems and sustainable cities. And while our project is driven by science, by the desire to understand this new type of artifact, ar artifact the society and ICT have become, we will implement tangible results, which means that we will implement a platform that would allow people people from schools to scientists to political uh, organization to uh, to companies to implement their own applications and just to tell the internet has had such a huge impact on us because it was an open platform on which everybody could implement things and that is what we are aiming at creating and actually implementing a software infrastructure with our results on which companies organizations private people will be able to build their own apps Okay, so what are the benefits of future ICT? I'm well, uh, pretty sh sure that it will be a good investment because all the problems that are being addressed by future ICT have huge societal costs, as you can see over here. So if we would only manage to make a 1% improvement, the project would already pay off multiple times, but we expect to have much higher improvements, 10 or 30% is quite kind of what we expect to reach. 
Besides, of course, there will be new spin-outs, new companies, and just to give you an idea of the potential of socially inspired companies, Facebook is an example. It's now a quite expensive and valuable company, and there's so many more socially inspired technologies that can be created based on principles of trust and uh, facilitating the ICT culture and so on. Okay, the process has already begun. So we've already started to coordinate research in most European countries with hubs being formed in those countries to bring scientists together. In fact, um, the academic institutions have also come together. So as well as the three represented here on the stage and the other par partners in the consortium of the pilot phase, we're also supported by the European powerhouses of university academic uh, institutions. As well, on top of that, we have the research organizations and institutes that are around Europe that also want to be engaged in this process and will form part of um, the full flagship proposal. In addition, we have businesses involved so that once we actually bring all this together, we will really achieve something that is really memorable and useful. So is it a good idea? Well, actually, this was taken from Scientific American where it was seen as one of the um, 10 world challenging ideas of the future. So we think actually, if nothing else, we've really achieved a great amount of uh, dissemination of the work of the, our project, but also of the FET flagships, I must say. We've been working very hard on your behalf. Um, and so I would like to finish with that. Thank you very much indeed.